In 2008, when the spill occurred, life changed for a lot of people. If I knew then what I know now, I would have said, leave that job, come home, don't ever go back. All right, so TVA is Tennessee Valley Authority, and it is a nuclear energy provider, but a lot of other things. But of course, like a lot of those companies, you have materials that need to be either encapsulated or somehow safeguarded. They had just been putting, you know, for years, coal ash into this huge pond or, and building the walls up around it. And they had been warned that that was unstable. And they ignored the warnings and um, it blew out. Resulting in, at the time, the largest coal ash disaster in our country's history, and also by volume, the largest environmental disaster in our country's history. We received a phone call from my husband's foreman, and he told him that, you know, he said, basically all hell's broke loose at Kingston, and uh, we need you down here fast. Jacobs, which is the contractor that TVA hired to do the cleanup, hire local contract workers to come in and clean up the spill. They were assured right off the bat that everything was fine, that it was okay, that it was safe. The on-site Jacob safety manager would routinely tell the workers, ah, you can eat a pound of this stuff a day and be safe. That's a direct verbatim quote. I noticed he was cleaning his ears with Q-tips and the Q-tips were the color of the coal ash. And he would blow his nose and there would be, you know, just, it wouldn't even be normal. It would be like a gray color. It was very clear that coal ash does have radioactive materials like uranium and radium and other toxic materials. But the workers were never given personal protective equipment at any level. Even if they brought their own dust mask, they would be shown to the gate. And so here the workers are caught between wanting to make money for their families, but also wanting to be protected so that they could be safe and healthy and not die from being exposed to it. You know, you go to work somewhere, they tell you you're safe, get your job done. They worry about you wearing steel-toed boots and a hard hat and a reflective vest, but they're killing you. And I was just like, this has been, they've done this to my husband, you know, the love of my life. I just could not flip and believe it. So do you just, you know, carry that around with you or do you do something about it? After the general causation trial and verdict, which was in October of 2018, my firm at the time was asked to come in in May 2020 to handle all 245 or so specific causation trials. When Greg Coleman and firm came on the case and took it over, uh, at that point, uh, I felt like we had, we had a chance. These folks had been in litigation for over 10 years. It was filed in 2013. Here we are in October of 2023. They had not received a dime in compensation. He was diagnosed with high blood pressure, asthma, and acute bronchitis, and emphysema. But to get this many people to agree to an amount and their distribution and how it's going to be handled and no one walk away, we take great pride in that. Thank God that, that there was a settlement. I mean, it was able to help a lot of people. A lot of people had, you know, a lot of medical bills, things like that. I'm very thankful for it. Very thankful. Mm -hmm.